Welcome back to All About Success. We're here for the final interview with Mr. Kushal Gunasekara, the founder of the Foundation of Goodness. And we want to talk a little bit into his dreams for the future and also deeper look into the secrets behind his success as a social entrepreneur. Once again, Mr. Gunasekara, thank you. As we continue this journey, uh, I am continue to be inspired by what you're doing here. But one thing I've seen as a secret to your success is the term excellence. In everything you do, there seems to be an excellence. Many people when they do social justice and entrepreneurship, they feel like just doing it is good enough. But you, in everything that's done here, there seems to be an excellence. Tell me about this concept and why is this so important to you? I think um, being organized, as I said before, dedicated, committed, uh, not compromising where you want to go yeah. with attention to detail and uh, methodically um, as well is, is the key. I've um, uh, experienced so many donors who come out here and say, hey, this place looks so clean and uh, very well organized and well kept. And some of them, you know, who have come to had have interviews with us um, to try and, uh, you know, uh, collaborate in terms of donating uh, monies. I have said, no, I don't think we need to speak anymore. Uh, this speaks for itself. So we would like to uh, make this contribution and become your partner. So I think that's very important. And then it also flows down the line. You know, even someone who cleans knows exactly what is expected of him and uh, to maintain high standards. Another thing that really inspires me about what your work is that there seems to be a very high standard in everything that's here. When you talk about web designing, swimming meets, netball competitions, uh, business school training, women's enterprise, those are not things that were related to a village. Those are things limited in Colombo. But I hear of these things here. All these years we knew of Colombo having the best and the rest having what was left. And you're changing that concept. Tell me, why do you do this and why is this important? Yeah, I think I believed that uh, always um, the disparity between the urban sector and the rural sector must be bridged and um, provide uh, the rural disadvantaged children and youth equal opportunities. So I decided to do something holistic by way of uh, you know all these facilities whether it's computers or whether it's women's enterprise, business skills development or sports uh, or other educational uh, areas uh, or children's goodness club for that matter. Um, so you know that way um, according to their strength, talent and skills they can use uh, any of those areas or actually go through all those um, you know learning uh, or empowerment uh, programs for them to realize where they are good at and take the next step. So it's a case of providing uh, the very best opportunity and given the training and that background they make great progress and I know with the kind of talent, skill and brightness they have you know they, they make uh, you know great strides towards uh, excellence and they excel. Speaking of equal opportunity uh, one thing that I've found about your program is you have a new concept called the village heartbeat making sure that the village will also have similar and important opportunities that the city would have. Please talk to us about Village Heartbeat. I'm sure our viewers would be very interested in that. The Village Heartbeat came from um, the thinking that Sinigama uh, facilities are far sophisticated, elaborate to, to be replicated in villages, uh, you know, because of the way in which we have got so many sectors in one village and the sustainability factor as well. So we came up with a concise uh, a model to um, incorporate the elementary areas of teaching kids English, training them in computers, having a library, uh, skills development, a children's goodness club, women's enterprise. Those were the core areas so that this could be put into a village or say five villages and you have one to cater to all the needs and then call it the village heartbeat because it's like the buzzing nerve center where they can have all the activities in that one place and I think already um, maybe last year we had about 400 um, children and youth take advantage of these facilities 
and if not what would have happened is my question so looking at it positively I think this is the way to go and if you even if you have one in ten villages affordable um, you know it doesn't cost that much to run or sustain it uh, annually like uh, the project we have in Sinigama um, that way I think we are bringing the best out of children who wants to get into the next level of English and IT in particular plus the children's goodness club which is a very very interesting concept to make them you know really meaningful productive uh, good value-based citizens who would uh, you know be the ones to take uh, care of Sri Lanka uh, in, in terms of you know going forward thank you very much sir uh, for all the words of wisdom and for your inspiration and I'm sure that you inspired many people uh, who watched the show today thank, thank you. you very much indeed Thanks. At Sinigama, we were inspired by Mr. Kushal Gunasekara's work and his work ethic and the principles and philosophies behind that work. But there was one statement that left us all inspired and this is something we found at the walls of the Center of Excellence. It says the amount of money in your bank account is not a true measure of success. If you are honest, fair, tolerant, kind, charitable to others and well behaved, you are a success, regardless of how small your bank account may be. On All About Success, we continue to give a deeper meaning to what success is and continue to take a closer look into the lives that influence Sri Lanka. So that was Mr. Kusha Gunasekar. Hope you were inspired as much as we were. Join us again next week for yet another exciting episode of All About Success. Good night.